Good morning, everybody. Spring is going to have to wait. A live look in the north suburbs where the snow has stopped for now. Yeah, for now. Also not a fun day to be traveling. A look earlier this morning at I-80 and 294. Visibility and road conditions, as you can see, just were not good. Nothing says, though, play ball like this scene at Sox Park <laughs> on the south side. Opening day, can you believe it? 20 days away. Good luck seeing the ball if the weather is anything like this. Radar also showing that we are not in the clear just yet. More snow is on ahead is ahead for us. You can see O'Hara already got seven inches. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lionel Moyes. Good morning. I'm Erin Kennedy. We do have team coverage of this late season snowstorm. Megan has early snow totals. Roseanne Teas has been driving the roads. Derek Young is monitoring travel times. And Mike Puccinelli is with those people who are cleaning up. But we begin with Megan. Hey, Megan. Hi there, guys. Yeah, I want to talk about those snowfall totals because we're in a little bit of a lull for many of you right now. O'Hare has had 7.1. This is a storm total so far. Rockford 3.9. Romeoville 4.1. Midway 7.9 inches. But Waukegan in just the last 24 hours has had eight plus and that's going to be the case for many areas up in Lake County. So it has been a very active period. We're still looking at another little branch of lake effect snow which will come in impacting this pink shaded area here bringing us possibly additional accumulation two plus inches. Then we're looking at this little pocket around Porter County and over into Laporte. This is going to be the next round of lake effect which will set up tonight going into Wednesday and for that reason that area is under a uh, lake effect snow warning for longer. Right now it's focused along areas of northwest Indiana shoreline from LaPorte County stretching mostly concentrated here in Gary but it does cross the line over into Will County and Southern Cook and heading down to the south and west a little bit of just scattered stuff for the rest of Cook County right now we do expect another band to lake effect to set up here and start moving in from Lake County down into Cook County these are the areas still under the lake effect snow warnings and advisories as of now it's not just us though if you have any travel anywhere across the country we're talking about a massive snowstorm in impacting folks across the northeast as well, where weather is really quite inclement. Now we're going to see lake, fe lake effect snow continuing today. Blizzard conditions possible in the northeast. So if you have any travel, even when our snow gets better, even when sunshine returns tomorrow, you are still going to see ripple effects in the travel department. Warming temperatures, though, into the weekend. Let's take a peek at what we have going on out there from our weather watchers. I've got about a 25 degree temperature here from Larry Laseco. He's in Valpo. He says the dew point is right at about 15. Their snow is just starting to ramp up now. <laughs> Maybe this guy enjoys it. I don't know about the rest of us, especially the rest of us who were stuck on the roadways this morning for hours at times, Lionel. Yeah, it just was not fun. The roads really weren't the best place to be this morning. We have been stressing that a lot. Absolutely. It's a little bit better now, but it was so horrible this morning. CBS 2's Rose Anteas is out in our mobile, web, mo mobile weather lab on the Kennedy Expressway. Easy for me to say. Good morning, Roseanne. Well, Aaron, it started early this morning, as you know, with near whiteout conditions on both the Edens and the Kennedy, and it never really recovered. But take a look now. We are on the Kennedy at this moment, and it's a slushy mess and still slow going right here near Division Street. It's still slippery, although the snow has stopped. But earlier, it was so much worse. Cars crawling on snow covered roadways, many of them splashed with snow and salt from passing plows and trucks. It was bumper to bumper backups on the locals and express lanes. Still, some drivers tried to keep a good attitude. Well, you're a patient guy then, because yeah. it was a long commute, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it, it, it was. Yeah, an hour on the highway. I mean, usually it takes me about 15 minutes to get here, you know. But, uh, I hang out, listen to some tunes, you know. And it's unfortunately in another few hours, it looks like uh, Aaron and Lionel people are going to have to go through the whole exercise again to try and get home. <laughs> I'll toss it back to you now in the studio. A lot of time spent in the car today. Roseanne, thank you. So as Roseanne just showed us, commuting has been a mess. Yeah, Derek is joining us with more on really unbelievable drive times. I can't remember a time that I've seen you have <laughs> times this high. Line, it was so tough, I didn't even want to say it. Around 7.30 this morning, we had over two hours trip on the inbound side of the Edens, three hours on the Kennedy coming inbound, and at 8 o'clock, the, both the Eisenhower and the Stevenson had drive times that were over an hour and a half, so really tough drive for people this morning. And Illinois State Police blamed conditions for this major pileup on the Kennedy Expressway overnight. One crash in the express lanes near Division led to a second crash. In all, 34 vehicles were involved in the pileup, and most of the damage to the cars, fortunately, was minor. One driver in the middle of the crash said it was slick and scary. 
the condition was very bad. I saw I was driving and I saw in the front a couple of cars stop and I saw the smash and I start, you know, I stopped the car and I saw from back they were coming, all the cars were coming and pile up and bomb, bomb, bomb. They hit each other and they hit me too. A 39-year-old man was seriously injured. Six others went to the hospital with minor injuries. Crews towed several vehicles away and spent hours cleaning up debris from the express lanes. It's been a tough night. It's been a tough one for Metro as well. We had a train stuck on the tracks, causing delays for many people coming inbound and outbound. Here's what we're looking at right now. 46 minutes inbound on the Kennedy, so still kind of slow for us. Our trip on the Eisenhower has normalized. The Stevenson inbound is 21 minutes. So Aaron and Lionel, hopefully round two isn't this bad. Back yeah. to you. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Certainly need patience today, Derek. Thank you. Air travelers also need patience because you might be seeing a lot of this. Canceled flights already today, nearly 700 canceled at O'Hare, nearly 70 at Midway. Nationwide, 5,800 plus flights taken off that schedule because of the weather. Some passengers just finding out at the airport that they won't be flying to the East Coast for days. Want to give you a live look at O'Hare. Certainly don't want to be taking off with this. Uh, with the weather here and out east, though, it could be days before things get back to normal. Among those impacted are Ryan Baker. We're on our way to Salt Lake City to cover the Northwestern Wildcats' historic first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament, but we've been slightly delayed. Our flight from O'Hare heading west was supposed to take off a little after 10 o'clock, and we're hoping to get off the ground just before noon. That's what the board says uh, to my right there. Uh, we've been delayed a couple of times because of the weather, as you know, but Hey, Northwestern's been waiting 78 years to get in the big dance. What's an hour or two for us? Yeah, as long as that team, right, actually makes it there as well. Well, clean up time now before what could be another round. Mike Puccinelli live in Wilmette, where people he spoke with are finding the silver lining in dealing with all this wacky weather. Hi, Mike. Indeed, the village looking absolutely lovely right now, covered in this white blanket, which I would say is uh, about six inches deep right now. Maybe a little less, but I can tell you it's more than enough to change quite a few plans on this Tuesday. After the snow stopped falling, the wind started blowing, creating frosty dust devils in Wilmette's Plaza del Lago. Wisps of snow seemed to dance before the camera. In Lake Forest, it wasn't Mother Nature, but rather the effective use of a leaf blower that whipped up this curtain of snow along Northwestern Avenue. Jesus Guinan was supposed to be on a plane heading to the west coast when we caught up with him. Are you hoping this is the last of the snow? Hopefully, hopefully. We're spoiled for a while, for a while and now, you know, it looks like winter is coming back. <laughs> Instead, with his two-and-a-half-year-old helper at his side, he was getting an unexpected workout in the front yard. You've got your little helper out here. Yeah, yeah, I have a little guy here helping me. <laughs> I actually have two. Uh, one watching and the other one helping. Barbara Royal says her dog decided to take her out for a walk along the lakefront. She was doing her best to keep pace when we stopped her in Gilson Park. You're pretty much getting pulled down the lakeshore. Yeah, it's her favorite thing. She would be a sled dog if she could. <laughs> You're the sled at this point, huh? That's it, but it's fun. We like it. You know, weather in Chicago, you got to love it. And although the lake effect winds can feel quite biting on the face, folks on the lakefront appear to be taking it in stride. You know, I like it. I, I don't think we really got enough uh, snow this year, so I'm pretty happy about it, actually. <laughs> Just a nice day to bring the dogs down to the beach. You scared you're going to get blown in? Mm, no, it's pretty good. <laughs> Perhaps they were won over by the icy beauty of what many hope is winter's last gasp. From the natural beauty of the lake to the man-made beauty of the only Baha'i temple of worship in America, as cold as it is out here, when you focus on the beauty of newly fallen snow in a setting like this, I kind of think it takes the edge off of the cold, which can feel quite biting on the face. What do you think, Aaron and Lionel? You guys agree? Looks yeah. like you're in a postcard, Mike. It looks so beautiful, looks beautiful. out there. <laughs> you when you're properly you dressed. You focus on the beauty. There yes. you go. That's <laughs> what we always do when it's your live show. Gotta find that simple your face. lining. Mike, thank you. <laughs> Stay warm out there. Hey, Mobile 2's been out in the thick of it all morning as well, giving you another live look at the Noble Square neighborhood on Chicago's northwest side. Earlier, we caught this pretty picture in West Suburban River Forest. The snow makes the homes and the streets in this neighborhood look like something right out of a movie. This was early this morning before most people were up. Once they did get up though, uh, this was the story. Unfortunately, you probably were one of them. Snow blowers like this were the stars of the show here in neighboring Oak Park. So here's how the snow looked outside our window. This is in Daly Plaza in Chicago's Loop. This was about 7 o'clock this morning. Not too bad, but within half an hour snow it was blanketing not just the ground but the entire sky. 
I really enjoy those time lapse videos. So do exactly what happens when we get hit with that lake effect snow, right? And remember, you can get the weather anytime with the CBS Chicago Weather app. It's available in the App Store and on Google Play.